The Possession of Hannah Grace, directed by Diedrich Van Rulgen. The story follows Megan Reed, played by Shay Mitchell, an ex-cop struggling with the memories of her time in the police force. A friend from group therapy suggests that maybe to keep herself out of trouble, she should get a job at her local hospital during the night shift in the mortuary. Obviously, this is quite a creepy place. Given that Megan is no stranger to seeing hallucinations due to the fact that she's tried to self-medicate for some obvious mental issues, you can see why she starts to question her own sanity when she starts to see lots of strange things happening around the morgue after they wheel in the cadaver, Hannah Grace. So I'd heard a lot of things about this film and there's been so many possession films, uh, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, uh, the possession of Billy's dog, uh, the, uh, the exorcism times 50, and they're so terrible. All of them, literally, I've, I've failed to see one that actually ticks the boxes. So uh, th there's one or two okay ones out there, but I've never really seen one that's been an actual good follow-up to some of the possession films we had in the, the 70s and 80s, you know, such as The Entity and the and Poltergeist a little bit. And, and obviously The Exorcist, you know, the, as cheesy as that was, it did have a very scary feel to it. So you can understand why I was really going into this film a little bit, uh, what are we gonna get this time? But I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised. The opening scene with the exorcism of, of Hannah Grace was, was pretty good, I have to say. It was quite scary. She was very demonic looking. Uh, and there was a, quite a grisly scene in there. I don't wanna spoil it too much. But uh, yeah, so I was grabbed instantly. Then uh, it skips to the uh, main character, uh, Megan Reed, where she's obviously got her own troubling past and she's trying to deal with and then thinks it would be a good idea to get a job, uh, as her friend suggests at the morgue, as an intake assistant, um, which is kind of strange, kind of a strange, but they do say in in there, you know, that uh, it kind of keeps them out of trouble if they're, if they're working all night and sleeping all day, then maybe she's not going to go to drugs and stuff to help with the, the trauma that she's had. So if anybody has a fear of dead bodies, then this is quite a creepy film. There's lots of them. They document them on the way into the morgue, taking photos, close-ups, um, and then obviously Hannah Grace comes in, and that's when things start to get weird. She starts to see things. She starts to um, question that whether she saw things or not. They have the most ridiculous sensor lights in this morgue ever. It seems as soon as you leave one room, the lights go off behind you, and no sensor lights are sort of programmed that way. They're supposed to stay on for a minute after you leave, or what, five minutes or whatever, so that you're not in the dark. And especially somewhere like a mortuary, they'd be like, just keep those on for 10 minutes, will you? Um, so it's quite odd, but it, you could argue that maybe the entity in Hannah Grace is, is what's causing the, the light failure and stuff. So who knows? I mean, it was quite creepy how the lights keep going on and off. One of the most surprising things I found when I was doing a bit of uh, reading up on this film was that they shot the whole film, well, pretty much the whole film in quite a low budget camera, something you can buy for around $2,000, which in fact, the camera I'm recording on was, was around that sort of price. So uh, they didn't use any high tech equipment. They used like quite a basic camera. Well, it, it was quite, a, it's quite a good camera, but it is quite a basic for film industry. You know, they, they would think nothing spending $40,000 or renting a, a $100,000 camera. So the fact that they did it all on a $2,000 camera just proves that there's a lot of potential out there for people that want to film it. They don't have to have massive budgets to compete with these Hollywood guys. So that that was very surprising to me. But it was actually shot in 2016 and there's been a long period where in post-production where there's been changes of management in this film. So it could be that they spent a lot of extra time on post-production sort of editing to enhance the footage, but so be it, you know, it, it worked really well. There's nothing I could say that it was, there was anything, that, there was no bad cinematography, there was no poor reflections and, and things like that. Uh, it was shot really quite well considering they had quite a humble budget camera. There's a couple of things I have to mention. So I am going to have to put out a couple of spoilers in this film. So if you, if you don't want to listen to the spoilers, cut off now, watch the film, come back. So I thought it was really quite unique, and I, unless you guys know otherwise, I can't remember a circumstance where there's been like a paranormal uh, entity or a possession that um, is healing itself as the 
demon is killing more people. So it's almost like she died, but she wasn't dead. She was able to come back as long as they continued to kill people, her body started to heal. And I noticed actually that her body was changing before she points it out in the film that like there's there's a bit where there's a big laceration across her abdomen and suddenly it's gone and I was like I'm sure that was there a minute and I actually thought it was a it was a mistake in the film but actually no she later on points out that they couldn't take photos but she remembers it, that there was a, a big cut across her waist and it's gone and it's almost like the body's healing itself and this is all around the time she's trying to explain it to someone else and question her own sanity. What I would say is I thought the way that um, Hannah Grace sort of died in the end, not the first time, but the second time when she is full full demon, uh, was a bit lame, you know? She's got all this power and she's lifting up one of the uh, policemen and her, her ex-husband, boyfriend, husband, whatever, and putting in, doing this sort of crucifix thing that she does with most of her victims where she starts to sort of bend them and then she'll sort of like break their neck or something. And she just pulls out her gun and starts shooting. Now, why did the girl not stop her from shooting bullets at her, you know, she's obviously got these powers, why didn't she sort of stop her grabbing the gun or sort of do it to both of them at the same time? They do hint that there might be a reason that she hasn't killed Megan or, or she hasn't, you know, she's killed all these people around but she hasn't killed Megan and maybe it's because of this trauma that she's got, she's got some of her, her own personal demons, so maybe the, the demon thinks maybe that's a potential new host, but she doesn't actually do any of that, so... You know, Megan grabs the gun and starts shooting at the demon, shoots her several times, and the demon falls to the floor. Uh, and apparently when you shoot them several times, there's a period where they will sort of be unconscious. You know, just die, just fall on the floor, and and that's it. And that gives her a window to get her, uh, her partner or ex-boyfriend into the elevator and go and get some help. And then she pushes her to the incinerator. And it's kind of like, well, why if this demon can appear when the body's in totally mangled half burnt and all it and then all of a sudden you shoot it 10 times can it, it does it sort of pass out and let you get it to the stage when you're pushing it into the furnace before it goes ah like that you know so it could have done with a bit of work there was really some pacing issues with this film as well you know it's it's quite a short film i think it was an hour and 25 minutes so it could have done with more background sort of insights and more back you know back shots of uh more memories of what happened of course you do see that uh, megan obviously feels she's responsible for her partner dying because of the way she didn't react when they were in a in a situation but really uh we could have done with a lot more of that see you know they flashed into her ex-boyfriend picking up his stuff and they have a little conversation there and then uh, you see her in some sort of group therapies and that's all you get um, but really they should have sort of showed you a lot more of her troubling past maybe some longer rooted issues something as simple as maybe having a difficult issue a year ago seemed a little bit feeble maybe some childhood issues would have been better you know maybe she had her own um, issues as a child uh, maybe she's experienced this before but that would have then explain some future events but the pacing so they jump from something dangerous to she's just walked upstairs and then uh you know some some that like she's just seen something really horrible and she's like oh, and then you see her next minute she's talking to someone oh can i talk to you i've got this to show you it, it, the pay it was all over the place and they've obviously like cut in bits of her past to try and explain why she's in the situation she is but they could have done that a bit better could have done a bit more of her past we it would have been a bit more entertaining then if you could feel sympathy for her instead i didn't really seem sympathetic to the to the person that was being chased around i was quite happy to see see how, how she got killed i wasn't that worried and that's because they didn't give us enough backstory if i really felt sorry for her and she'd had a real troubled life maybe i would have wanted her to succeed so as you know i always go by imdb's people's vote and this got a score of 5.1 i think that's fair because uh it's not a six film uh, as, as I said I've pointed out some issues and it could have been a lot better if they had corrected some of those things but again they changed management later on in the in, in the production stage so maybe there was only just enough to cover the film like footage wise and they couldn't go back and refilm stuff when me and my wife are looking at films to watch 
and we'd see a horror film at 5.1 my wife's like i'm not watching that but uh i obviously watch all of them uh so i'd like to maybe 5.5 5.6 i think would be better because you get people would be like well they, it's a reasonable film but 5.1 is fair it's not anything amazing i would like to see a sequel i would like to think that hannah grace uh, didn't die in the furnace maybe well at least the demon uh, should I reckon should have jumped into Megan that would have been awesome and they could have done it with the eye they could have changed the color of Megan's eye at the end that would have been like a nice little sort of wait for the wait for the sequel so guys I just want to give a shout out to a Facebook page called sweet movie reviews uh, they've been quite supportive in posting all of my reviews on there and I follow a lot of what goes on there uh, so check them out they're pretty good and always, if you like to listen to some of the things I notice in these films, mainly horror, I know. But if that's up your street, then click the subscribe button and follow what I do next.